They will be uh, presented to the National Assembly. Uh, we will have to consult them in terms of the date of that presentation. Prospects for a bright 2019 financial year. Executive Council okays the budget content. Vice President Oshimba Joe in Kwara State assesses progress of trade and money. In our honorable task of adjudicating, we spare little or no thought at all to life after the bank. Remove all ties with your political associates, Chief Justice of Nigeria cautions judges. Matter will not be had on the basis that in the whole of this country, the EFCC is helpless. Plus, politicians in the courtroom, EFCC pushes for accelerated hearing. Good evening. This is NTA Network News, reaching you live from the corporate headquarters in Abuja, Nigeria. I am Kene Ema Abodike. Reading with me is Ruth Ario Samuel in Lagos. Thanks for joining us. The 2019 appropriation bill is now ready for presentation to the National Assembly by President Muhammad Buhari. This followed the approval of the general principles of the bill by the Federal Executive Council. State House correspondent Adam Musambu has the details. This is a special session of the Federal Executive Council. It was summoned by President Muhammadu Buhari to finalize work on Nigeria's 2019 budget. And for over two and a half hours, members of the Council thoroughly analyzed the provisions of the draft appropriation bill through a memo presented by the Minister of Budget and National Planning, Udoma Udo Udoma. Questions, observations, and suggestions were taken from participants after which adjustments were made on the financial document. The 2019 uh, executive budget proposals were approved by the Federal Executive Council today, and they will be uh, presented to the National Assembly uh, we will have to consult them in terms of the date of that presentation. We are hoping as soon as possible we will be in touch with the National Assembly uh, because you know that they have to uh, agree to the date that they would receive the budget. So we are we'll go, we'll going to be in touch with them immediately. The medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper approved by the Council in October this year projects 8.73 trillion naira as the budget size for the year 2019. The amount is about 400 billion naira, less than the 9.12 trillion naira revised 2018 budget. The 2019 budget is predicated on a proposed oil price benchmark of $60 per barrel, oil production of 2.3 million barrels per day, exchange rate of 305 naira to a dollar, and GDP growth rate of 3.01%. In the meantime, President Muhammad Buhari has signed into law the National Open University of Nigeria Amendment Act 2018. This allows the institution to operate as all other universities having the same powers, functions, and administrative structures, thereby eliminating possible discrimination on its products and programs. Senior Special Assistant to the President on National Assembly Matters, Senator Ita Enang, who disclosed this, however, told newsmen that the Electoral Act Amendment Bill 2018 has not been assented to. The President has taken decision in accordance with the powers vested in him under the Constitution. And by convention, that decision contained in the communication can only be revealed by the person to whom that decision is addressed. But the electoral bill has left Mr. President because he has taken his decision and has remitted it back. It will be recalled that members of the political class in Nigeria are divided on whether or not President Muhammad Buhari should ascend to the new electoral act as 2019 elections draw closer. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. 
President Mohamed Buhari has directed the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development to work towards putting an end to undue interference by some state governments over mining so that the renewed drive for economic diversification can be enhanced for sustainable growth and development of the country. The President gave the directive shortly after his conferment as the life patron of Miners Association of Nigeria by eight members. State House correspondent Adam Sambor again has the report. President Muhammad Buhari is confirming as life patron of the Miners Association of Nigeria was in appreciation of the sense of hope, direction, fulfillment and credibility restored in the mining sector by his administration through the economic diversification agenda. President of the Miners Association of Nigeria, Sani Shehu, also presented the minerals chart box to the Nigerian leader. He said with the enabling environment now created, Nigeria has recovered her prime position in mining jurisdictions in the world and already foreign partners from China, India, Australia and Canada are now in the country actively participating in the exploration and mining of solid minerals. Mr. President, I need your permission to make a declaration that from today, the Miners Association of Nigeria in collaboration with security and relevant government agencies, will do its best to see that mining is done right and illegal exports of mineral resources that is a big minus to the uh, revenue generation of this country stopped. President Muhammad Buhari, who thanked the Miners Association for the honor done to him, promised to sustain efforts at unlocking the economic potentials of the solid mineral subsector of the country. Consequently, issues impeding mining operations will be addressed and miners are to be encouraged by government so that the sector can be rejuvenated to become the future mainstay of the nation's economy. The interest of the federal government really is employment. Uh, which uh, was a big population we have, and uh, the revenue, which we need very badly in diversifying the economy of the country. So we will encourage you to invest more, to attract more foreign uh, investors in bringing technology and equipment to bear on the industry. Minister of State for Mines and Steel Development, Abubakar Barbari, who accompanied the miners to the State House, takes pride in the major achievements recorded in the mining sector under the Buhari presidency. We will be, on the 13th of this month, do the groundbreaking of the first mining refinery that we've given permission to. And we'll also, on the 18th, be inviting the Mr. President to launch the first ever goal purchasing program. The pilot project is starting in KB and all arrangements have been put in place. A lot of things that Mr. President are happening around 44 minerals. Your coming has given hope to Nigerians and we believe that whatever you do, this country will be the best for it. And as such, we will definitely support your efforts in diversifying the economy of this country from the oil sector to other sectors. During the event, the miners lament the undue interference by some state governors in their operations, thereby making mining difficult and made a case for what they call a real sector support facility as well as Anko Borrowers program for mining by the Central Bank of Nigeria. They also appealed for fiscal policy in the mining sector to avoid the multiple taxation being experienced by miners. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo has assured traders and artisans in Kwara State that the federal government will continue to encourage them to grow bigger in their businesses. He gave the assurance when he paid a visit to a better market in Lorry, the Kwara State capital, to assess how the trader money scheme will be executed and to ensure that all traders get the money. Correspondent Kemi B.C. Sani reports that the vice president also paid homage to the uh, emir of Lorin, al Haji Zulu Gambari, after launching the scheme. The Vice President, Yemi Oshibajo, who interacted with the traders, urged them to be patient with the federal government as it was not relenting in its effort to improve their lot through its enterprise and empowerment scheme. 
It said the scheme has already been launched in more than 25 states with 2 million traders targeted nationwide while encouraging them to get involved. Oshibajo said this is the first time the federal government is involving the very bottom of Nigeria's economic pyramid for direct financial stimulus aimed at creating wealth within the informal sector of the economy. The traders in the market expressed gratitude to the federal government for the gesture. Vice President Oshibado, who commended the Emir of Ilori, Elijah Ibrahim Sulugambari, for upholding peace in his domain, said the federal government is proud of him. We are very glad all the time that Farah State remains a place of peace, a place where people can pursue their businesses, pursue their beliefs without any fear. And I think that this is a very, very good thing. This state remains one of the most peaceful. The Emir thanked the Vice President for the visit and therefore urged the beneficiaries to make good use of the money. I believe that uh, he has not failed the country. May God continue to help your government and your partners. The Vice President was in Elon Quara State for a one day working visit to inaugurate the Trader Money Scheme. Kemi, BC Sony, NTA News. A federal high court sitting in Jalingo has directed the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to arraign the Taraba State Governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Sani Abubakar Danladi. Before it, by next sitting, or it will dismiss the case against him and other persons before the court. Justice Stephen Pam gave the ruling following the inability of the prosecuting agent to arrange the defendant before it for the second time. Joseph Olson reports. The former acting governor of Taraba State and the State All Progressives Congress APC governorship candidate for the 2019 general election, Sani Abubakar Danladi, former Minister of Labor and Productivity, Joa Danlami Ikenya, a member representing Takun 2 state constituency, Mark Useni, are to be arraigned by EFCC before the Federal High Court in Jalingo for conspiring and receiving money amounting to 450 million naira without proper banking transactions. For the second sitting, two of the defendants, Joel Ikenya and Mark Useni, appeared before the court, but Sani Abubakar Danlade was again absent. Counsel to EFCC, Israel Akande told the court that the investigation team is having trouble locating the third defendant and prayed the court to direct his counsel to serve him with the charges and present him in court. Justin Stephen Pam wrote that ESSA should live up to its responsibility and arraign all the defendants before it by next sitting. The court has adjourned the matter to when? Uh, to 15 January. And the matter will not be heard on the basis that the EFCC is unable to serve the third defender and produce him to court. Feel that the court should discharge the charge so that when they are ready, they should come back. Meanwhile, a cross section of youth gather themselves outside the court gate with placards demanding for justice. In Jalingo, Joseph Sound Oten. NTA News. The former chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Malam Nuhuri Badu, has won the 2018 Sheikh Tamin bin Hamad Al Thani Anti Corruption Excellence Award in Malaysia. Nuhuri Badu is a joint winner in the Lifetime Outstanding Award category for what the organizers described as his high level commitment and exemplary values and virtues in fighting corruption. The annual award organized by the Rule of Law and Anti-Corruption Center in Qatar since 2015 is to facilitate the achievement of goal number 16 of the Sustainable Development Goals to promote good governance by fighting corruption. The award globally recognizes organizations and individuals that dedicated themselves to combat corruption. Now Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Bose Mustafa, is among six notable Chief Executive Officers of Ministries, Departments and Agencies who have received Servicom Award of Excellence for supportive roles to Servicom and for ensuring effective service delivery in their organizations. Fatima Aliyu tells us more. 
Servicom End of the Year Award seeks to create a healthy competition in service delivery among government ministries, departments and agencies and to celebrate those who have excelled in their services in line with the promises in their service charters. Reflect on what we have done for the year, what has worked well, what has not worked too well, what we can improve on come 2019. The award, which came in different categories, had chairman of EFCC, Ibrahim Mongo, his counterpart at the FRSC and the Nigeria Immigration Service, as well as Ahmed Issa of Brekete family, were among the best supportive chief executive officers. While overall best performing nodal officer of the year went to Egbele Okoye of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria for ingenuity, hard work and budgetness in raising the Savicom units of our organization to the next level. We want to dedicate this award to all of you on the field that make us look good. The meeting also afforded the nodal officers drawn from 36 states of the Federation an opportunity to strategize on how to gain the confidence of Nigerians in various MDAs in the following year and beyond. Fatima Liu, NTA News. Let's now take some messages. Don't go away. You know from day one, God makes life easier. They brought us past second billing and even an optic fiber cable to make sure we optimize. There are two things in our lives we depend on the communication and information, voice and data. Whether you sell, buy, learn, teach, serve, or lead, it really comes out to those two things, voice or data. Today's world is all about you. You want what you want, how you want it, and Glow delivers. The freedom to use voice and data the way you like on every recharge. Easy. Glow Yakata. Recharge 100 naira and get 2,200 naira. Minimum 500 naira to call all networks and 10 friends and family. Plus all the data you need, up to 6 gigabytes. Buy a Glow SIM or dial star 220 hash to migrate. Glow, Grandmasters of Data. The Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, through its training arm, the Anti-Corruption Academy of Nigeria, is conducting a corruption risk assessment training for the leadership of the national anti-corruption agencies of African Union countries from 10th to 12th December 2018. The event will be declared open by President Muhammad Buhari, venue, State House Conference Center, Old Banquet Hall, Time 10 a.m. Guests are to be seated by 9.15 a.m. Dr. Musa Usman Abubakar, Acting Chairman, Announcer. Nigeria Christian Pilgrim Commission invites you to the 2018 Main Pilgrimage Flag of Ceremony. Date, Saturday 8 December 2018. Venue, Victor Atta International Airport, Uyo Akwaibom State. Time, 4 p.m. Special Guest of Honor, His Excellency, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, Vice President. Special Guests, Udom Emmanuel, Executive Governor, Akwaibom State. Distinguished Guests, Right Honorable Simon Lalong, Executive Governor, Plato State. Chief Host, Reverend Yomi Kasali, Chairman NCPC. NCPC, Proclaiming Christ, Serving Nigeria. Ujato Uja, Executive Secretary, Announcer. Nigeria, now still one of the few countries in number of pregnant women still they die from things we're not supposed to kill them high pass. Thank God for things like family planning or childbirth spacing, where they help reduce number of women where they die because of say they carry belly. When we plan and put space between the times so we the carry belly, our mama and picking them no good they die anyhow. If all the women we need within the future use they control how they take their belly, who you put the call contraceptives? Then we fit prevent the death of about 1.5 million picking them and 31,000 women inside the next 10 years. Our leaders, we need to settle this matter by making sure say family planning services reach every woman inside the country. No woman supposed to suffer or die because she want bomb picking. We must join hand and get it together. Make our future for bright. Now, Federal Minister of Health, they bring on this message. The National Working Committee of the All Progressives Congress has approved the formation of a National Peace and Reconciliation Committee for all six geopolitical zones to address post-primary election disputes. Consequently, National Chairman of the APC, Comrade Adams Oshomole, has approved appointments for the South-South Zone. Composition of the committee is as follows. His Excellency Ogbeni Raouf Aregbeshola, Chairman, Senator Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, Alhaji Abubakar Sani Bello, Sullivan Chime, Senator Ogbeni Saraki, Dr. Emeka Wogu, Mrs. Aleluchi Kukigam. Meetings with aggrieved members will be held in the following states. Edo, 
Monday 10th December 4 p.m. at Benin Government House, Akwai Bomb Tuesday 11th 10 a.m. at the Le Meridian Uyo, Cross River Tuesday 11th 2 p.m. at the Transcorp Metropolitan Calabar Delta, Wednesday 12th 10 a.m. Grand Hotel Asaba, Rivers Thursday 13th 10 a.m. Atrium Event Center Stadium Road, Portacot, Bielsa Thursday 13th 2 p.m. Atrium Event Center Stadium Road, Portacot, Barista Atairo Machido Durumbungwandu, Committee Secretary Announcer. The Ohi Etohuyi of Igbira Land, Dr. A. Tom Adaba, cordially invites all to the public presentation of his personal memoir, But for God, under the distinguished chairmanship of Ambassador Professor Ibrahim Abuolagambari, date December 8, 2018, time 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., venue, National Universities Commission Auditorium, Aguirre Street, Maitama District, Abuja. For details, please call Margaret A. Soime, 0803-304-9772, or Onimisi J. Adaba, 0803-312-0944. Organizing Committee Announcer. The Advertising Practitioners Council of Nigeria, APCON, in partnership with Brandmark Communications Limited, invites chief executives, heads, and staff of media and communications department of government institutions all over the country to the first ever Nigerian Public Sector Branding Summit, Odin in Abuja. Theme Branding Approach, a tool for enhancing public sector objectives. Chief Host, Alhaji Lai Mohammed, Minister of Information and Culture. There will be keynote presentations and panel discussions from notable brand experts, peer review opportunities, and networking. At the one day summit. Date is Tuesday, 11th of December 2018. Venue is Shewu Musa Yadwa Center, Central Business District, Abuja. Time is 9 a.m. prom. For further information, please call 0803 314 5691. 0803 590 0078. Nigeria Public Sector Branded Summit, promoting a culture of excellence in government institutions. Announcer, Mrs. Ejeli R, Acting Registrar, Chief Executive Officer, and the Thousand Practitioners Council of Nigeria, APCON. Mr. Bola Kale Yusuf, the ballet of Bodhisattva. I like to use this opportunity to thank the federal government, especially Apart from all other novel programs that has reached the grassroots people, I want to thank them for the National Household uh, Cash Transfer Scheme. For the first time, probably in the political history of Nigeria, it has never happened that people who are in Hamlet, I'm talking about Manda, Salanga, Lasaki, Ajegunle, Ajia, Elemere, all these are inner villages that ordinarily government policy don't ever ever get to them, not to talk of a direct intervention in their financial well-being. I commend this project and I wish that it goes on because it is touching the people that actually need government attention. Welcome back. President Muhammad Buhari rejoices with President of Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, Comrade Ayuba Philippus Waba, on his election as President of the International Trade Union Confederation, ITUC, the largest trade union federation in the world. In a statement signed by Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, the President joins members of the NLC and all Nigerian workers in celebrating the election, which further signals the great work the union had been doing in assuring the welfare of workers. As the first African to head the ITUC, President Buhari believes the Labour leader will bring his wealth of experience in persuasion and negotiation to the new position, assuring him of the federal government's support. The President wishes the NLC President a successful tenure. Now turning to security matters where the Nigerian Air Force says it will not relent on its aggressive capacity building of personnel for enhanced professionalism in line with President Muhammad Buhari's directive of restoring lasting peace in the country. Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, reaffirmed this at the graduation ceremony of basic regimental officers and airmen course at the Regiment Training Center in Kaduna State. Defense correspondent Olaji De Bello reports. These graduates display combat proficiency in force protection in complex air and ground environment combat evacuation and effective response by regiment personnel in crisis situations.
This is part of a deliberate policy to train personnel of Regiment Air Police and Intelligence Special Forces for complementary roles in base defense architecture. On our part, we will continue to support the federal government's policies and continue to conduct operations ranging from humanitarian services, peace in enforcement, to counter insurgency operations in furtherance of our national security and developmental objectives. We've endeavoured to give you the tools to counter the threats the Nigerian Air Force bases and assets face. The Nigerian Air Force is citing present administration support as motivation that has boosted the desire of becoming the best in the sub-region, which informs the new platforms, equipment and specialised training. From the Regiment Training Centre in Kaduna, Olajide, Bello, NTA News. It is the position of the Nigerian Police Force that both appointment and confirmation of the Inspector General of Police be a unilateral power of the President. This formed part of suggestions at the public hearing on appeal to repeal the Act establishing the Police Force. National Assembly Correspondent Abdullahi Yaminu tells us more. The bill, which seeks to repeal the Police Act 2004 and enact the Police Act 2018, has brought together stakeholders from all walks of life. The aim is to improve the performance of the force, considering increase in population, high rate of criminal activities, and the need to ensure modern techniques of policing in the country. It is therefore suggested that the requirement for confirmation of the appointment of the uh, removal of the Inspector General of Police be expunged from the bill as to make the police less professional in its operation. Every policeman has to be in the barrack or police quarters, which is very, very important. It's one of the problems we have today. Police must be up to the task of protecting life and property and do so without compromising human rights and the sense of community that holds us together. It's commencing to ensure the placement of an enabling law passed by the National Assembly to make an enduring and the sustainable legislative support for the Nigeria's police force. There were various suggestions for some clauses in the bill to be redrafted at the hearing. They include change of name from Nigeria Police Force to Nigeria Police Service, provision for single deputy inspector general of police, and notice of intention to sue the Nigeria Police Force from the National Assembly, Abdullah Haminu, NTA News. Now, the National Coordinator of the APC Broom Platform, Dr. Tom Ohiekere, and stakeholders have told federal government projects in Nasarawa State, saying the people should reciprocate by voting again President Buhari in 2019 general election. Tacey O'Meri, who joined on the tour, reports. The APC Broom Platform is a media support group for the re-election of President Muhammad Buhari. The group is in Nasarawa to ascertain the level of infrastructure development. This is to attest that there is the presence of the federal government here in Nasarawa State. And this is one of the project sites, the National Integrated Power Project. We have presently embarked on a national media tour to expose the infrastructural project achievement of President Muhammadu Buhari and the progressive governors in infrastructural areas of agriculture, health, power supply, transportation, education, among other critical areas. Coordinator also visited the federal government housing project in Lafia and some key ones including Lafia Comprehensive Special School, Cargo Airport, Township Roads by the state government. The team appreciates the state government for bringing development to the doorsteps of the people. Nasarawa State is among the eight states we have selected to showcase the achievement, commitment, promises, and covenants of the APC since we came on board has been fulfilled. In Lafia, Tessie O'Meary, NTA News. Ahead of the official flag off of campaign by the governing All Progressives Congress, some of its support groups have commenced mobilization of voters. I Stand with Buhari is among the latest to bring together APC interest groups from across the country to renew their support and fine-tune strategies that will enable them add value to the electoral process. 
The group is confident that their structure is endowed with the necessary resources to champion the cause of good governance and seek the re-election of APC at all levels. And that's why so the team of this three event three is next level outreach to reach out to other Buhari uh, movement groups. To let them know that next level means next level in agriculture, next level in education, next level in infrastructure, next level in everything good for we and our children. I am proud that President Mohamed Buhari is my president because he's a man of integrity, a man that we have found that there is no corruption in his list. He's a man that has given our children hope and given us future. Meanwhile, barely 72 hours after the purported endorsement of the PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar as consensus candidate of the Coalition of United Political Parties, the national leadership of the Grassroots Development Party of Nigeria and some political parties as well as presidential candidates have dissociated from the position. The steering committee of the Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP, had this Wednesday announced PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar as the coalition's consensus candidate. Barely three days after, it appears the center can no longer hold, as some of the political parties are already backing out. The CUPP did not uh, appear to uh, go by the provisions of the MOU especially in the area where it was said that uh, two primaries will be held. I feel there are 45 or 46, can never be traitors. We do not believe in the ideology or the guiding philosophy of this UPP. So if 41 political party come to that article, it does not affect me. But I believe that we're working hard. All the candidates you see in presidential forum are candidates that believe in this country and believe in the continuity of the good jobs that the present administration is doing. Similarly, the Social Democratic Party, SDP, in a statement on the CUPP endorsement of Atiku, enjoined all its members, especially its candidates, to carry on with their campaigns. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. The stakeholders in the electoral space of Niger State have made a commitment to abide by the laws governing the electoral process towards a violent free 2019 general elections. This commitment was made during a stakeholder security meeting organized by the Niger State Police Command in Mina. Dauda Mohammed reports. The arrival of the Niger State Commissioner of Police, Dibal Paul Yakadi, signals the commencement of a security meeting with political parties and other critical stakeholders in the electoral process towards a peaceful and fair 2019 general elections. This stakeholder security meeting, which has political party chairman, local government council chairman, government appointees and members of the various security agencies as well as senior officers of the Niger State Police Command is centered on the need to create a peaceful atmosphere before, during and after the 2019 general elections. All what we need is a peaceful, fair and free election. And I believe if all of us come together, we'll be able to achieve this in Niger State. There has been a lot in terms of synergy between political parties, security agencies, particularly the police, with the IPAC, that is the Inter-Party Adversary Council, Niger State Chapter, not to be partisan, not to be one-sided, not to preach hate, uh, whatever, or to be seen as siding a political party against another. Uh, what the Commissioner of Police has just done is just a kind of a reminder to us on our responsibilities in order to preach to our followers to remain peaceful. Votes not be fight so that all of us will know that voting a candidate is not eating or fighting. The end of this expanded stakeholders meeting towards the success of the 2019 general elections, all present have resolved that they will abide by all the electoral guidelines. A peace pact is also expected to be signed soon by all the political parties. From the police officer's mess, Mina Dauda Mohammed, NTA News. Now, the federal government and Abia State have formally signed a definitive agreement for the realization of the ambitious Enyumba economic city in Abia State. 
The ceremony which took place in the State House was witnessed by President Muhammad Bugari, senior government officials and prominent Abia indigents. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo was there. The definitive agreement on Aimba Economic City was signed on behalf of the federal government by Mr. Wale Edun of the Nigerian Special Economic Zone Investment Company, while Mr. Uche Ehediwa and Dal Uzu dotted the lines for Abia State Government as well as the Aimba City Development Company. The ceremony marks the commencement of work at the site of the Aimba Economic City as President Muhammad Buhari is expected to perform the groundbreaking event of the project soon. This is what the federal government is desperately looking for, people of uh, great foresight initiative to come together to provide uh, jobs for our team and population and provide goods and services. I very much congratulate you for your successful attainment of this objective of the federal government. I assure you that uh, the federal government uh, will um, do its best to encourage you according to the agreements just signed. And I'm pleased uh, the Minister of Trade and Industries, I think, is from around that area. <laughs> <laughs> the Aimba Economic City is said to be a game-changing project that will be sited on a nearly 10,000 hectares of land spanning three local government areas of Ukwa East, Ukwa West, and Ogunabu. The objective is to create a global business hub that connects the nine southeast and south-south states of the country with a target to attract proactively long-term local and foreign investments, thereby integrating Nigerian businesses into regional and global supply value chains. The Yenimba Economic City came as a result of your vision and policy to ensure that states are allowed to develop at their pace and contribute towards their vision to diversify Nigeria's economy, leveraging our strengths and those things that we have comparative and competitive advantage over other states and parts of Africa so that we can actually develop. We are sure, sir, that with the event that is holding today, history will be rewritten, not only in that part of Nigeria, but indeed Africa, and the world is waiting for Enimba Economic City to emerge. Already, the federal government has designated Enimba Economic City a special economic zone with the status of a free trade zone. When fully operational, the city will have the capacity to provide over 625,000 jobs with an estimated annual value output of more than $5 billion. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. It's now time to join Ruth Ario Samuel in our Lagos Network Center. Thank you, Kenne, and welcome to Lagos. The Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria Fan Training School in Lagos has been inaugurated and designated ICAO Aviation and Security Training Center. This was in a memorandum of understanding between Fan and British government on aviation security at Fan Training School in Ikeja, Lagos. Elizabeth Iwuga reports. The request for the designation of FAN Training School as an ICAO Aviation Security Training Center was made on the 8th of June 2017, after which an evaluation by ICAO was conducted in May 2018 by Regional Security Officer for the Western and Central Africa Office, and under 24 months, the request was granted. The President International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, Dr. Olumu Iwa Benat Aniu, and the Secretary of ICAO, Dr. Fang Liu, were represented by Regional Director of ICAO, Mam Set Jalu. He says one of the main pillars of ICAO aviation policy is the recognition of training organizations through successful field assessment based on ICAO guidelines for aviation security training activities. To provide aviation security training at ICAO regional and national levels to all categories of personnel involved or responsible for the implementation of security measures policies and procedures. 
I wish to inform ICAO that presently in Nigeria, there are five certified ICAO AFSEC instructors and over 60 qualified Nigerian AFSEC instructors that can be of service at this training center. We have enough manpower and you know our manpower are certified people, people that are certified by the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority or by ICAO. The FAN Training School is expected to attract patronage from the airport communities of West African sub-region and its environs, thereby contributing to the development and improvement of aviation security training in the region. In Lagos, Elizabeth Iwuga, NTA News. The head of civil service of the Federation, Mrs. Winifred Oyoita, says efforts are being made through various reforms to reposition the civil service in line with global best practices. She stated this as the 18th graduation ceremony for participants in postgraduate diploma in public administration of the Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, ASCON, Topo Badagri, Lagos. Tunde Saiki has details. The head of the civil service of the Federation, who was represented by the Permanent Secretary of Staff Welfare, Didi Watson Jack, said the federal government is currently working to provide a professional civil service that is anchored on stewardship, trust and stakeholders' engagement that will ensure MDAs are equipped for policy management and good governance. Government has put in place deliberate strategies to build the capacities of public officers in order to empower them. The Director General of the College, Cecilia Gaya, and the Chairman Governing Board of ASCON said postgraduate diploma in public administration is designed to broaden the intellectual scope of participants. 49 candidates who attended the 36th, 37th, and 38th sets of the postgraduate diploma in public administration organized by ASCON in collaboration with the University of Lagos. He keep persistent with knowledge and skills required to operate as professionals in the wide management areas. 49 participants graduated with various categories of grades. As public servant or civil servant in any position, they must do it in such a way that if they are called upon, they will not, they will still be accountable to say, when I was in that particular position, I did my best. Management skills and how to be effective and industrious in our respective places of work. In a lecture preceding the graduation ceremony titled Code of Conduct and Ethical Behavior in the Practice of Public Administration in Nigeria, Professor Chuks Madwabum of the National Open University of Nigeria noted that there must be a political will to make the institutions for instilling ethical standards and behaviors in the public service work. In Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTA News. Still watching NTA Network News. More reports ahead after this timeout. Please stay with us. Are you all right? Hospital, all night. Oh. Emergency. <sighs> we are losing her, we are losing her. Don't worry, I'll save her. What is wrong with you? Building burned to death. What? It was life or death. He said, boy. I've got the dog. Oh. Hey, Mr. Mm. Man, wake up. Yeah. Ah. yeah. This is Spartan. Ah. <gasps> My resignation letter, sir. No Augustine, the unrivaled big boss of data. Get 125% bonus on all data plans. Also enjoy unconditional 25% data bonus non-stop on all auto renewals. Down star triple seven hash to choose a plan. Nigeria we hail. Those who divide our people are getting better at their game. Yet, now we did do ourselves pass. Lecture at the oppressed to them. them. Bus driver, they show passenger where? Local government people are terrifying local government people. Campaign people will come and go. Grammar people will remain. So now, many people have become uncultuvasis, unwilling to desire or work for a better nation. We must continue to push and believe all. And small, small, our prayers will be answered. This education you go get out. These children then go grow and prosper. 
and this business, they ain't not gonna spoil for your hand, though. Because Union Bank understands what it means to push through challenges and together we we'll go clear every doubt when they are away. Don't be an Uncle Thomas. Union Bank, your simpler, smarter bank. For your hustle by Google. Yes, you in the air conditioned office with the itchy throat. Strap cells. Go to the spotlight with the raspy throat. Strap cells. You in the pollution. It's you. Dry throat. Strap cells. Hello in the downpour with the scratchy throat. Take strap cells. Strap cells, with its soothing medicinal ingredients, will heal the harm done to your throat from external factors. Strap cells. Strap cells. Strapsels for a dry, itchy, raspy, scratchy. Who am I? I'm a caregiver, a slayer, Give them. a boss lady, a foodie. I am the chief quality inspector and chief organizer. And when I'm cooking with my Maggie star, I become a kitchen grand master. Every day, you choose to make the difference. That's why you choose Maggie Star. Made from natural soya beans and other carefully selected ingredients to help you cook the difference. I am the chief enjoyment officer. And I'm the magnet that brings my family together. Need I say more? <laughs> but best of all, I love what I do. With Maggie, cook the difference. Nigeria, a land of promise, land of potential, rich in oil, arable land and solid minerals, yet hunger, joblessness, homelessness and poverty are widespread. Over the years, Nigeria has suffered from hospitals without drugs, schools without teachers and a huge infrastructure deficit. Clearly, we are yet to reach our full potential and one of the reasons is because people choose bad leaders. Some even sell their conscience for a few thousand naira for 2019 elections. Don't sell your vote. Don't sell your future. Don't buy the people's lives. Vote selling is a crime against yourself. You will spend the next four years paying for it. Vote buying is against the law. Politicians, stop buying votes. People, stop selling your future. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Welcome back. The Free to Shine campaign seeking to end the transmission of HIV AIDS from mother to child has kicked off in Abuja. The event is a major step taken by wife of Nigeria's president, Aisha Muhammadu Buhari, to actualize the dream of wives of African presidents at eliminating a childhood AIDS in the continent. Momso Damian Dati reports. This is a solidarity song to support wife of the president, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, to liberate African children from HIV and AIDS under what is tagged the Free to Shine campaign. It is to drive the implementation of the decision reached by the Organization of African First Ladies earlier this year to transform Africa through prioritizing children, adolescents and mothers and the fight against HIV. Here are wives of state governors, development partners, representatives of the Ministry of Health, other relevant stakeholders and infected mothers with adolescents living with the HIV and AIDS, including Florence Onu, whose life testimony reflects the picture of millions of victims. HIV carries the face of women. The men that infected us used to be at our back. Most of them leave us, abandon us with our children to die, even though they are the one that infected us. It is for such issues that Mrs. Aisha Buhari said there will be no relenting. I believe that we have the resources. If the resources can be utilized judiciously, we will all feel comfortable living in Nigeria. Nigeria is committed to ensure that the vision, mission, and objectives of the Free to Shine campaign are achieved in the country. Be assured that the United Nations system stand ready to provide our full support 
to ensure the success of this campaign. Effective treatment is available, there's family testing. So the unveiling of the plaque, Free to Shine, and the inauguration of Wives of Governors as champions officially symbolizes the open war on HIV AIDS in every state across Nigeria. Momso Damien, that he, NT News. Chiba Obi Walter Naji will now bring us new business news. Hello, Kenna. It's nice to be here. And we start with the international trade as African states converge on Cairo for the inaugural Inter-African Trade Fair. Nigeria is among 40 participating states. The fair, to be hosted by the Egyptian government, will have more than 140 participants from Nigeria who will use the opportunity to showcase rich cultural heritage and market locally produced products from shoe industries, success stories in the agriculture sector and growing mining industry. The fair is an effort by the African Export Import Bank and the African Union Commission to deepen intra integration and ease barriers to trade on the continent by member nations. Trade in Africa accounts for more than $1 trillion, but only 15% of that amount is exchanged between African economies. The announced Nigerian stock market, the bearish trend formerly experienced in the capital market seems to be abating as this week experienced a number of bullish sentiments which show a boost in investor confidence. The stock market closed today on a positive note, aging up by 0.15%. The All Share Index closed at 30,862.82 basis points, valued at about 1.5 billion naira. The Ikeja Hotels led the Gainers chart with a 0.17% ahead of Diamond Bank and Lasaco, while Air Service led the losers table with minus 0.70%. Orlando led the top trades with 60 million shares, valued at 310 Point eight million naira. Back to the studio, and that's where we end the business news at this time. Many thanks for watching. The news continues with Kenne. Thank you very much, Chima. Right. The Petroleum Technology Development Fund (PTDF) is set to up two state-of-the-art laboratory centers in Nigeria to facilitate the research programs. This was one of the critical issues considered at the meeting of the National Board of Trustees for PTDF endowment programs. Executive Secretary of the PTDF, Aliyu Belo Guzo, says this will reduce the cost of carrying out research works abroad for test. For now, we think this is going to be an issue that we're going to put on the front banner, um, partly because it's a key element of our mandate at the PTDF. Because if we have all the facilities centralized, the researchers from across the Nigeria can come and avail themselves of such facilities to work with them. So this is one of the things we are planning for the moment, and it's, this meeting is going to discuss some of the processes that we need to focus on in achieving this. The National Board of Trustees for Endowment Programs is made up of Vice Chancellors of Universities, Research Fellows, Management Staff of PTDF, and chaired by the Executive Secretary. With barely few months to elections, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onagan, has urged women judges to stay away from their politician friends to avoid distraction and concentrate on discharging their duties. The advice came at the 2018 National Association of Women Judges of Nigeria Biennial Conference in Abuja. Ali Yutuko reports. It was a platform to assess the role women judges play in justice dispensation and finding ways of improving them. With the team live after the bench, the judge emeritus. The conference is also to prepare female judges for transition from the bench to the sofa. In our onerous task of adjudicating, we spare little or no thought at all to life after the bench. We have problems, especially with the states when it comes to retirement. There are some of them who retired. They have not gotten their benefits from the government. For a 76-year-old Olufumi Lola, a retired Supreme Court Justice who dreamt of being a judge since her secondary school days. Life on the bench can be engaging as it is always work day and night. 
but retirement is a different ball game. Once you leave an employment here in Nigeria, your friends dwindle. The compendium of the papers presented at a previous International Association of Women Judges conference was also unveiled in honor of Justice Clara Ogumbi, a retired justice of the Supreme Court. The Chief Justice of Nigeria was also honored for the positive reforms in the judiciary in Abuja, Aliutukur, NTA News. We now join our Benin Network Center. All right, let's now bring you some commercial messages on the news. is packed with B vitamins to fuel your greatness on the go. festive season there's no place like home get a go tv decoder and go tenor and one month of go tv max subscription for only 6900 naira go tv live it love it the honorable minister of information and culture Alhaji lai mohammed cordially invites commissioners for information across the 36 states of the federation heads of public information organs information managers and other delegates to the 47th national council on information with a theme tackling fake news and hate speech to enhance peace and national unity date 11th to 13th december 2018 arrival and registration of delegates starts by 10 a.m on monday 10th december 2018 Venue, Umaru Musa Yaradua Hall, Mutala Mohammed Square, Kaduna. Special Guest of Honor, Malam Nasir Erufai, Executive Governor of Kaduna State. Deaconess Grace Isugekbe, Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Information and Culture. Announce. Sports Update is next. <laughs> 